Steve, hi, how are you doing? Like, subscribe, etc. This week I've been looking at chicanes offshore and trance in general, kind of got that Ibiza 99 summer of trance vibe going back again. Um, this is what I've come up with and we'll go in, show you it in session and then we'll take over arrangement. Here's everything. I'll start off, I'll, I'll play you the first thing. Now this is, um, I've been playing around, I've put, it's effectively like pieces of a jig, so I've put a lot of things into the session view, which I'm going to take up with arrangement and kind of reassemble and get the track going. So this is as it is now, arrangement is currently blank, uh, so this is all to go for. I didn't start with the template because I kind of just started with one track and just went from there and things just developed and it just went in its own direction. So we've got four drum elements creating a drum break. We've got a soft pad and we've got a couple of plucked noises. I'll play you the scene. So what we've gone for with the plucks, it's a sort of trance pluck. So I'll talk you through what I've got here. I've actually got two wave tables now. I wanted to, I'll just solo that and let it play. Classic trance pluck. I've just used, you can see sort of a sub shape there and a triangle. And then I've got the bass dual so I like the sound of it. And we're just above triangle and it's going up to there. So I've got two things happening. The filter, if I open up the matrix, you can see that the filter is affecting the filter one frequency, sorry, the envelope two, which is going straight down, is affecting the envelope frequency, which creates that pluck sound as the filter closes it down, you get an initial high frequency attack and it shuts down really quickly. Uh, but I also wanted to do it on the wave shape, on the second wave shape on here. And the other wave table, you can see that I've actually got a delay on there, but it's a really low millisecond delay. So if I solo that, it's quite low in the mix, but it gives it a bit of width, but you don't want too much width. I just wanted a little bit more depth to the pluck sound, so without it. And then you add in that bit of width. Just adds a little bit of extra to the sound. So both of those, I have, well in there, I've got the bit warmer preset there, the bit warmer preset here, but I've changed it to analog, analog clip effect in both of the sounds. Utility just to turn it down because it was quite loud and then just a nice delay, quite short delay. Going through with the glue compressor just to catch the peaks there. And then the EQ8 because there's quite a lot of low frequency sound in that that I wanted to get rid of. Now I do have another delay which I was going to use for later on in the track um, because if you listen to this ping pong. So I'm going to automate that in part of the track to do something with it as it develops. And I've got it, got it's gone through its own Valhalla. Um, and the reason I've got that is because I wanted it to be compared to the, I've got the Valhalla room on here. Now you can see I've got a reasonably long reverb decay on that, 9.44 seconds. And I didn't want the same length of decay on this one. I wanted a shorter decay on the reverb. So I want to give it its own delay. So I've just copied what I've got on the send channel and just made it very much shorter, a little bit more early um, reflections as well. So it just gives it its own thing, but it still fits within the whole piece. And then I've got a tiny bit up on the send so that it fits. So the second pluck, it's exactly the same, the way that that's firing up, but I've just got, there's nothing happening to the wave, I've just got a triangle and a sine wave, so it's a really soft pluck, there's nothing too much happening, and I've got pretty much the same processing going on in it. But when you hear the two of them together, they're very different. But because the bass pretty much on the same patch, they complement each other quite nicely. Now the soft pad is in reason, and it's just using something I really like the sound of. So I've got two Malstroms here, I've got the low pass filter on both of them, cutting off a lot of that top end, so it's a really gentle soft pad. I've got a bit of modulation on it as well. And then when it comes into here, I've got it sidechained to the kick drum for later on. And then this audio effect rack, effectively, no pun intended, I wanted to give it width, but I didn't want to overdo the stereo width. So I've got the stereo width turned right up. I might even turn it a bit more actually. And then I've got another chain without it. And then I've got another chain with some chorus on it. 
and it just kind of helps to broaden the sound out a little bit. So I turn it off. It's nice, but just throws it out there and then plenty of that reverb send on it. Now the drum group, I started out with an old sample pack. I'll tell you how old it is. I actually have it on DVD somewhere. Um, and it's called Beat Digging and it was just acoustic drumming, which I quite like the sound of. So this is what it sort of sounds like. In fact, no, that's the samples. This is what it sounds like. But I'm just taking off the bottom end on the EQ there, a little bit of chorus. Again, it's got its own Valhalla on it because I didn't want the long reverb on this. And then I've got this one, which is chorus, to, well, it's flange to hell. Taking out the low end on it. And that's just a, that uh, drum loop mixed down, sampled down. And this one is using a different patch, but I'm EQing it to get rid of this sort of tinny sound that it had on the snare. And all I did was just have a few different hits there, so it gives a little bit of variation. And it's a five bar loop as opposed to this one, which is a four bar loop, so it's kind of changing all the time, that sort of polyrhythmic thing going on. And then I have on the samples, one sample of that and another sample which is a snare and I'm changing them with the envelopes. So you'll see I've got instrument rack chain selector. So all I did in the instrument rack was if I open up the chain view, the selector is just one or two and the chain selector is here. So it only goes between zero and one selects either that chain or that chain. So I can play the different samples and I was gonna add some more samples to that as well. So that all together, a nice sort of break sound. And I grouped it in because I want to put dirt and grit on it with the erosion and then a little bit of saturation again with an analog clip. So I take them off. They just add a little bit more grit to it and something I quite liked. Uh, the next stuff, I've got the Dirty Sign, which is exactly the patch you'll be able to find on the Solar Fields uh, video. So I've just used that here. Nothing else on it, it's just as it is. So you'll recognize that if you watch the Solar Fields video, you can watch back to see what it is. And then I have the Arpeggio sound, which is very similar again to the Solar Fields video. It's a nice, high level arpeggio, got it going through the steer pike, I've got dual arpeggio on a synth there, bit of EQ, dual arpeggio on a synth there, and there's quite a few things going on in Reason as you can see. But it's a nice sort of, this is the second scene which I'll play up for you. It just gives a really nice high frequency thing going on there. And then in the third scene we're bringing in a few new things. This is the 303 from the 303 video, no more explanation needed. I just played around with the controls until I got a sound that I really liked. I'm probably actually going to drop this one or put it up an octave because it was a little bit too much. So we've got a noisy pad which I have shown before, but it's very, very straightforward using three wavetables. You can see I've got nothing on this one. That's the two wave shapes. On this wavetable I've got the noisy unison, quite a lot of it. And on this third one, I've got the noisy listen again, eight voices, but only a tiny bit of it. And together that creates this really nice noise based sound. It's quite CPU intensive, but it's the noise uh, unison module on the wavetable is beautiful. It's really, really nice to use. Like see, as on here, I've got this turned quite far up onto the send. You can see I've got them all up to a different degree because it's kind of a glue and reverb. It brings everything together. And then the channels have got their own reverb. I'm still putting a little bit on the send just to give it that little bit of reverb glue. So the Grand Piano is very, very straightforward. It's the Ableton Grand Piano preset, and that's it. I put a little bit of volume because it's quite quiet. And again, it's got its own Valhalla because I wanted to give it a longer delay time so that's 12 and a half seconds delay on there and you can see the depth is actually there's no real early reflections it's all late reflections now you can hear the piano better in a later bit here I 
and you can even double reverb this up if you want to get clever with it. Sometimes it's nice to kind of drizzle on loads and loads of reverb, especially for this. I probably will end up actually getting a little bit deeper with it. Uh, on the next scene, the next thing to come in is the kick and the bass. So the kick is incredibly straightforward. It is hard kick from Ableton Kicks, the pack that you get with Ableton. And I've also got a wavetable on this, so... It's only little, but it's a sine wave. Uh, actually, a triangle, I'll say that again. Triangle with a sub, and it's just there to give it a little bit of extra bump on the kick hitting. For the bass noise, I've used the Poly instrument, P-O-L-I. Um, Techno Saw, I think that might be my preset, I'm not too sure, but it's very, very basic. And I've just EQ'd it out there, because if I take that off, far too much, and I just wanted it to be a low frequency bass sound. Bit warmer preset on the saturator, and bit of compression because I'm side chaining it with a kick. Now, I don't need to with this bass line, but I'm using the side chain because if I do kind of get a bit more creative with the bass line, then it's gonna get pumped by the kick. Now, we've gone through sound, kick, up, pendulum, pad, noisy. So the noise drop that I've got on here is fairly this noise drop uses reason because i already had a few set up things you can see i've got envelope one on a straight downward thing and you got envelope one on the oscillator position this is a wavetable synth so it's also envelope one envelope one is working on the frequency of the bandpass filter so that bandpass is sweeping from high to low to give us that nice drop feel. Fairly simple, I've also got it on the spectral filter. So you can see on each of these wavetables, the high frequencies are being filtered out as it goes down. So that creates a nice sort of drop down into the, uh, the luscious section. Uh, I'm also using up here the 909 core kit very simply using it. I've just got a bit of saturation. And that fits in with this scene here, um, which I'll play for you. It's kind of a main theme thing. I went for the 909 because it's really typical of the genre and I kind of, it just fits. You do it and it just works and it fits really nicely. It's a bit of saturation just to kind of blend it all in and I, I changed it to analog clip. Because the bit one preset, I think, is the cyanide fold. So with everything I put together, I had that first break section. This, these are all ideas, really. Again, more ideas. A little bit of a grand piano. Only a tiny little bit, so I figured it'd be nice to bring it in in sections. And this is a... possibly going to put the 303 up an octave because I think it clashes too much with the bass sound. We'll turn it off. Yeah, I'm actually it works quite well there. And I got a bit carried away with the 303 on the pad. So I did this a bit of break section. So all of the plug sounds are different as well. This is kind of like say the main theme of the This is where I think the 303 is a bit more. See what I do with that when I take it over arrangement. I got this is a bit of a break section, and I quite like that you can start playing around with the different parts as well. So if I wanted to bring in things and just have an idea of how it's going to sound coming out of this break with a little bit of bass added. And what happens if I bring in the kick from that bit again? I 
and then I've got the next section after that kind of the idea was this could actually come out of that or lead into it, I'm not too sure. A little bit of improvised grand piano. Quite a lot of improvised grand piano. That did quite a lot of uh, going in with the mouse and just correcting the notes on this. And another section. And then just a couple of things on the pluck, which I didn't know. This is where I kind of thought, do you know what? I could bring in this second delay here. The idea that maybe it'll fit in with a break, it'll work as a break. I wasn't too sure, so I just kind of left it as it was. And then I've got another section here. Let's take this back down. This I went a little bit mad with. So that's everything I've got at the minute. I'm going to take that over to arrangement, play around a little bit, try and assemble the pieces of the jigsaw, see what happens, uh, and aye. So I dragged it all over into arrangement view. This is what I came up with. I've got the opening section, got a bit of a bend, got the drums going into the main section. Got this, got a little bit of a break, got the finished section, and then it kind of went out. And I actually decided I didn't like it. Um, I completely changed what I did because I just didn't get enough of a balearic feel off it. I don't know what it was, it just didn't, it didn't click. So I changed the melody, I changed what I was doing, and this is what I've come up with. Here we are. This is a more balearic feeling thing. So I'll just quickly run through what I've done for the arrangement, why I've done what I've done, and then I'll play the whole track so you can hear what's going on. So for the very beginning, I've started off with this nice low pad, nothing too much. Piano comes in, there's a few things here that give you kind of a feel for the theme, so a little bit of a teaser of what's to come next. I open it up with the drums, I've added a noise riser in there. And with the drums, I played around quite a bit with the drums, so I've got the drum group, I grouped everything in. By the way, this is absolutely awful for gain staging, I didn't do any gain staging whatsoever, I just got carried away with the sounds and kind of just started making things and jamming it all together, so yeah, ignore the gain staging. So I, what I did was I sampled the drums, put them into a new drum rack, and I I put on there the Vintage Maker from one of my old videos and a little bit of grit on the drum group with the Vintage Maker again, glue compressor just to keep everything. So I sampled them and I've actually changed them since I sampled them, I've moved them around. And on the drum sample itself I ended up changing quite a few things on it. So that is a loop based on this drum rack here but if you look at the MIDI part you can see all the things that I've got going on in that drums. To be honest with you, I probably can't remember most of what's going on because I did so many things with it. I just kept on chopping and changing, playing around and sampling until I got what I want because it didn't quite sound right to us. But I like the feel of it and I've got a nice classic build up on the drums. We've got the kick and we go into the automation. Take that off because I have been using the keypad. This incidentally is in A minor because I started it on the laptop and I just started it with the actual keyboard. So it's a lot easier to produce an A minor when you're doing that. So the kick, I've automated the frequency so you can see that going up there. So that works quite nicely for taking it up there and just kind of creating that feel of everything rising. You've got the noise riser, and then we've got this noise thing that comes in as it kicks in, so it all kind of splashes you. Very balearic type splash. But what I've done is I've chopped and changed a few of the parts. So I've sort of changed melodically a little bit, and I've got sometimes I've got the arpeggio playing here, and then a break for a 303. So the 303 is only playing in that one section. What I did to this was add an octave, um, add a sawtooth and an octave up. And it's 
just to give a bit of space, a bit of air. It kind of felt like it needed something a little bit extra. Uh, the piano I've played around with, I've improvised quite a few parts in with the piano. So the sound palette remained the same pretty much. Um, and what it is with the arrangement is just pulling it all together, making it cohesive whole and balancing the sounds, balancing the wits, trying to get everything sounding big and balearic, lots of splashy balearic feels to it. I'm really happy with that actually. This has been my most fun project without a doubt. Really, really enjoyed this. Keep on coming back to it. Spend a day where I'll have to work on it for an hour, go away, come back for a couple of hours, go away, come back again. And when you get to a certain stage of an arrangement, it, it's incremental changes. You're only doing a little bit. You're tweaking a bit here, tweaking a bit there. This morning, I added the piano solo, just improvised that in because I felt that this last section needed something. But it's kind of come together in sections of your build up, your main thing, a little bit of a break on three and three. And then we come in with another theme. Piano comes in. Breaks things down, and then you get it breaking down even further. And I put in a couple of two, three bar loops here. So where we've got these longer loops, these eight bar loops, then I've got a four bar, a two bar, two, three bars, because it just kind of worked really well with the piano and it felt nice to change the theme up a little bit, change the chords a little bit, so the progression felt a little bit different, so it's a break as well section. And then that builds up again and builds into final theme. Everything comes in and I wanted it to flow out there. The drums kind of come away, it goes back to that little beat. And then at the end, the drums just collapse. Everything just sort of falls apart at the end and dissolves. Um, it's self-explanatory what I've done with the arrangement, so I'm going to play it. You can have a look at what's going in, what's coming out as everything goes along. Hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed making it and hope this process has uh, been quite useful. Anything else, just hit us up in the questions. I'm happy to share bits. I'm clearly not going to share the track because I'm... Uh, you know, I'm not that generous. But any other questions, anything you want to know about getting the sounds that I might not have covered or anything, just give us a shout. All right, catch us later.